Sports Cavalcade. It's breathtaking supercross action on the most challenging course in America. The young riders of this demanding and dangerous sport will have to dig deep to find the necessary strength and endurance. They'll be riding bikes that encompass all of the grace, beauty, and quickness that have made the sport of supercross a visual wonder. Today, from the historic Daytona International Speedway in Daytona Beach, Florida, TNN Motorsports presents American Sports Cavalcade coverage of the Daytona 125 Supercross by Honda. For the very first time here on TNN, we're devoting an entire show to the 125cc Supercrossers. Hello, everyone. I'm Steve Evans, and welcome to Daytona. We do this for a very good reason. Did you know the factories sell twice as many 125s worldwide as they do 250s? Very popular machines and for very good reason. They're very light and very maneuverable and they don't appear in front of minor league crowds even though they're kind of considered the AAA baseball of Supercross. They share equal billing with the 250s and they won't let you down when it comes to excitement. 24 pounds lighter, as we said, very maneuverable. They give up a little power, maybe 12 to 14, but that is partially made up for with a very close ratio show six-speed transmission instead of a five-speed. You will love these little rascals. We've told you about the motorcycles. Here's Brock Yates to tell you about the course. Steve, a great day here at Daytona, and that has packed the grandstands with motocross fans as we get ready to go with a day of 125cc racing. Now, the riders are going to face some interesting new challenges. Designer Gary Bailey has totally revamped this racetrack. It used to be that the track was all right-hand corners for the, for the most part. Now, he's reversed it, so mostly left-hand corners. And, of course, Daytona is known as the longest track on the circuit, nearly three-quarters of a mile. So as the day progresses, physical endurance and strength of the riders is going to begin to become a major premium. Going to be an interesting day. Lots of competition coming up, and we've got a first seat just about ready to go. Well, all in all today, you'll be seeing four races. There will be two heats of six laps each. The top nine go to the feature, heat number one at the gate right now. Then a last chance qualifier, followed by the main event, where all the money and all the points are. Chad Pedersen, a real favorite from Fort Dodge, Iowa, to transfer to the main without uh, having to run that dreaded last chance. <laughs> Okay, here comes young Doug Henry on the number 16 Honda. He's a major contender out of uh, Oxford, Connecticut. Fine young rider. And right next to him is Tim Ferry. Right down the road in West Palm Beach, Florida. He's on board a Yamaha. The field comprised of bikes from all four of the major Japanese manufacturers, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, Kawasaki. And this is one sport. Uh, you don't want to get too over-anxious at the start. You could impale yourself on that gate that falls towards the bike. Nail that with the front wheel, and you are going over the handlebars with the bike on top of you. So all of these riders hunch forward, alertly watching the AMA starters for any sign that that gate is going to fall, and it's imminent. This course couldn't be in better shape. For the first time in several years, there has been very little rain. The dirt is set by the riders who have practiced on it to be the best they've ever seen anywhere. All right, and here they come, charging through the first set of whoops, and we've got a spill already. Well, it's hard to get through that crowded start without some kind of action. Number 171, Junior Jackson, and uh, number 70, Jeffrey Pastana, both hit the dirt pretty hard, but they're up and restarted. These kids are tough. You've got to be tough to be any kind of a contender in motocross, and normally you'll see them jump right back on the motorcycle and get going, and they uh, make their way down through the back part of this course over three-quarters of a mile to some of the toughest dirt in the world, Steve. And number 29, Tim Ferry on his Yamaha is bolted out into the lead, followed by 46, Barry Karsten, then 597, Davey Yizik, and 83, Pat Barton. Uh, those last three all battling for that second-place position. All right, there's high-flying Doug Henry has moved up into the third spot, and he is about to challenge Barry Karsten for second. Yeah, Doug Henry on his Honda showing a lot of restraint for a young rider uh, in an important race in front of a big crowd in national television. He's not getting in too big a hurry because he's got six laps here to try to get that second spot, and he's going to take it. Yeah, he came right off that jump and uh, got underneath Barry Karsten to take over second spot. So at this point, though, it's still Tim Ferry who's well out in front, but uh, you can see there that uh, Doug Henry is definitely on a move as he gets through these whoops in good shape. And uh, there you saw Karsten uh, bobble a little bit, so Henry is way out front now in second spot. Here's another look at that incident right at the start of the race. 
Junior Jackson in the front there is clipped from behind by 70 Jeffrey Pistana who botches the landing and then they both just totally lose control. But again, no injury. They're up and back out on the racetrack. We have a wonderful high camera here at Daytona, so let's show it to you. See the two red bikes right in the center of your screen, in the air, right there. You see where the contact is made. One rider just had more momentum than the other, and uh, there just wasn't enough real estate for everybody to have his own little square mile. It's really amazing that that doesn't happen almost on every lap. These guys run so close and so competitively. As there is your leader, that is Tim Ferry, and right behind him, in the air at this moment is Doug Henry trying to reel him in. We'll be right back. To Daytona and our coverage of the 125 Supercross by Honda. You can see right there with four laps down, there's the top five. In the third spot on a Yamaha number 597, Davey Yizik. Well, we can see Davey right now fighting for his life and position because he's got number 46 on a Suzuki Barry Karsten coming right up his tailpipe. Remember, Karsten uh, was uh, up in third for a while and then fell back, but uh, he's still in the hunt as uh, number 52, Jeff Curry there, blows by Jim Neese for fifth position. So Curry on the move as well. And Barry Karsten, that number 46 machine, riding in the fourth position, he may be next to feel the sting of Jeff Curry. That 52 bike continues to make up that distance, pulls up another couple of bike lengths right there. So Barry Karsten having a little bit of a problem holding on some of the faster riders here as he makes a good move over that jump and down through the whoops and over that uh, consistently. I'll tell you, Steve, these kids are just in such great physical condition. As you can see, these motorcycles work their bodies so hard. Oh, there is Karsten, and he goes down in the whoops and will lose a couple of spots. Yeah, he gets started again. Good recovery. But while he was down, both Jeff Curry and Jim Neese got by him and put Karsten back to sixth place. We got another spill. Our leader goes down unassisted, Tim Ferry, and there is your new leader on the bright red Honda, number 16, Doug Henry. Now, he and Ferry were so far out in front of the pack that if Ferry can get this thing cranked up and back in the hunt, he'll still no doubt finish in the top nine, maybe even in the top five, and avoid that consolation. Let's remember, we've only got a couple of laps to go in the top nine. Go directly to the main event. There's your leader. Doug Henry, Oxford, Connecticut, doing a fine job. Boy, but he got a break when Tim Ferry went down because Ferry was holding on to a good solid lead. Both those riders had broken away from the rest of the field. And right now, Doug Henry virtually unchallenged. Here's another look at Barry Karsten's spill. Just to give you an idea how close to the ragged edge these riders are all the way around this course. He just made a little bit of a bobble, and that was enough to cause him to take that spill. While Jeff Curry does a good job to get by him without hitting the down rider, but it will drop Karsten, as I said earlier, back into the sixth spot as both Curry and Jimmy Neese get by. Let's again watch uh, the bike that was in the lead, 29 Tim Ferry. He also goes down much the same. He slides off the hoop de dupes as they call them, into the inside of the course. And these hoops that they've engineered into this course make the surface of the moon look like a pool table. They are positively vicious. They sure are. You just can't develop a really good cadence on him. And uh, there you see Doug Henry go by to take the lead as uh, Tim Ferry tries to get back up and get into the race. Well, here we see 46 Barry Carson in fifth and will interval back to number 29 Tim Ferry. Now has gone from first to sixth. But I think right now all he's concerned about is not making another one of those mental or physical lapses, whichever it was, maybe a combination of the two, and finishing in the top nine. That's the strategy. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure Barry Carson's trying not to repeat that bobble that he had because he wants to stay in that top nine as well. So right now, it's Doug Henry way out front and nobody able to challenge him. But here comes Barry Carson on the comeback trail. Remember, he took a spill. That's Jimmy Neese in front of him. And Carson trying to reel him in for four spots, Steve. And it's interesting to watch the different styles over the jumps. Some riders try to make as much distance in the air as possible. Other riders try to make a shorter jump and get the wheel down and driving sooner. You'll see them both. And through the hoop doos now, there's starting to be some lines, some little ditches or canals or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> and you try to get your wheels in one of those, but unfortunately it may kind of uh, have a fork at the end of the canal and you don't know which way your bike is going to go. Yeah, you just ride on pure instinct on these things, uh, and uh, they are so good, these young men, and as I said earlier, in such terrific physical condition as that race for four spot continues with uh, Karsten still trying to get around Nice, but Nice seems to be able to hold him off right now. And they are headed for the white flag that will signify for them one more lap. 314 Jimmy Nice and Barry Karsten. 
We're going to stay with them. This is the most uh, competitive two-man duel out on the racetrack anywhere. Look at this. It gets better by the moment. That's right, exactly where Barry Karsten fell and let Jimmy Neese by. So Karsten trying to get a little revenge here as he moves. Oh, got a good jump there, and he gets by Jimmy Neese to take over that four spot. A great jump and a great move on the part of Barry Karsten to make a little bit of a comeback here. So he's definitely headed for the main. If he holds on for yet another half lap here on this very difficult Daytona Beach course. But there is Barry Carson sitting in the four spot. And he appears to be able to hold on to it over Jimmy Nees 314. Well, what about our leader, number 16, Doug Henry? Well, here he comes, headed down to take the checkered flag. This is his very last lap. He has a huge lead on the rest of the field. So he will, with honors, go directly to the main event of this 125 by Honda. So here's the race for fourth by a couple of guys, both on the comeback trail, as it were. That's 46, uh, Barry Karsten. Remember, he took a spell. And Tim Ferry in 29, he was the early leader until he went down. But right now, it's sort of a race for honors. They're uh, definitely headed for the final, no question about that. But uh, if Tim Ferry definitely liked to get by Carson to finish in that fourth position to gain, regain a little bit of that embarrassment I guess that uh, happened when he fell while he was uh, well out in front but he won't do it because Carson finishes in fourth here comes Tim Ferry in the fifth position so we got a winner and Steve is standing by with young Doug Henry well some of the Florida fans didn't like it when the uh, ferry went down didn't bother you a bit no it kind of actually helped me out <laughs> <laughs> tell us about the racetrack you're the first ones to try it in the 125 uh, it's really rough out there it's getting really ruddy and uh, it's, it's really my kind of track it's uh really tough thank you like abuse yeah it's a long track and uh i hope to see a, you know a good race in the 15 lap main great job thank you okay there is your winner doug henry who uh came by to win it after uh, the early leader tim ferry fell he comes up to finish in the fifth spot david yezik in second jeff curry barry karsten in fourth after uh, he too fell Jim Neese was up among the leaders, but fell back to six. Chad Lowe in seven. Craig Nowak, Shane Lawson. Bill Wallen, well, he's going to have to try the last chance race if he's going to get into the main. Steve? Well, Florida zone, Tim Ferry. He had a great lead going, and then, well, it all kind of went bad real quick. Yeah, I got out of control. Uh, Henry started pressuring me a little bit, so I, I looked back, but I don't know. I think I can do it in the main. I think I finished fifth place, so I'm not happy, but uh, it'll have to be. Thanks. Brock? Well, that is the moment that uh, he will remember when he went down while holding the lead here. So, uh, Barry says he's going to be back and won't take his pill in the main. As Doug Henry goes by, he's going to have to deal with him again. We'll be back for more 125cc Supercross racing right after this. Daytona heat number two is at the gate here at the 125 Supercross by Honda. I'm Steve Evans along with Brock Yates, and those are modern-day gladiators, Brock. Ezra Lott's got a Bainbridge, Georgia. He's on a Kawasaki. Look at all the safety apparel these guys are wearing now. It's incredible. <laughs> and what a sea of colors. I'll tell you what, I, I don't think there is a color in a rainbow that's not represented on every motorcycle. That is Mike Brown, and right next to him is uh, Scott Sheik out of Germantown, New York. You know, these kids come from all over the United States to ride down here, Steve. It's really great to see every part of the country represented. And it used to be that budding new talent came primarily out of the Sun Belt states, particularly California and Texas. Not so anymore. These kids, along with their folks or their grandfolks or even on their own, travel to wherever they have to, whatever time of the year it is, to ride with the